this video, we are going to add the drop down icon to our nav bar, and we're also going to make our nav bar mobile compatible. So let me show you what I mean here. So we've got our example uh, website page that we're building here. And you can see that when I shrink the page down, we have a couple of things that are going to happen here. So when it reaches a certain width, we are going to be hiding uh, these five links here. And then we are going to be adding uh, the drop down icon here. All right. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the uh, hamburger menu to our list items here. So at the uh, bottom of your uh, list items here, let's go ahead and add that. So we're going to add the list tag and we're going to do the same thing that we've done to add the rest of these links and we're going to create an anchor tag. And we're going to do this one a little bit different. Okay, We're going to leave this empty for now. All of these have a destination where the uh, link is going to go when it's clicked. Uh, but this one for now, we just want to leave empty. Let's go ahead and close that anchor tag. And in the middle here, we're going to put what's called a Unicode. And what that is, is we can actually, by just a short list of characters, like numbers, letters, uh, some of the uh, symbols on the keyboard, you can actually create uh, some icons that work just like fonts. So to do that, let's go ahead and open up uh, your browser. And just in the top here, let's just type Unicodes. Okay. And we can go to the uh, first one here, this Unicode, Unicode character table. And they've got like thousands of Unicodes here. And we're going to come up here to the search and we're going to type in trigram. Okay. And you can see that it brings up this hamburger menu for us. So go ahead and click that. And then you can see down here that the HTML code is this uh, string of characters right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, close this browser, and in between my anchor tag here, I'm going to go ahead and paste that. All right, save it. Let's check this out. I'm going to hit my Thunderbolt over here, bring this up, and you can see that we've added the symbol here, this hamburger menu. And what's really cool is if you look at this, it's in complete alignment with all the links that we already have there. That's because if we come back to our code, like I said, these Unicodes act like text. So on our list items and our anchor, over here in our style sheet, you can see that we've already added the styling, right? It's all displaying in a blo uh, block. We've got a text align of center. Everything's floating left. Um, we've got the font size and everything. So what's really cool about these Unicodes is you can actually style them just like a text. So they, they inherit all the text properties here. So cool. So we've got our hamburger menu here, but if you noticed the hamburger menu here, it is displaying on desktop and we don't want that to happen. So let's take the next step and go ahead and hide the icon when it's uh, displaying on a desktop here. So if we come back to our text editor, let's go ahead and grab this. And you know what? You know how we added a special class to the sign in and sign up because we specifically wanted to do something with these uh, lists uh, right here. Let's do the same thing uh, for our hamburger menu because we're going to be uh, interacting with it and adding specific styles to it. So in our list item here, let's go ahead and add a class. And I'm going to call this drop down icon. Okay. So now we have a specific class where we can interact with this and add specific style of properties to it. So let's grab that class. We're going to grab the parent like we've done before. And then we're going to grab the list item uh, with our specific class drop down menu. Or is that right? Yeah, drop down icon. All right. So to get this to be hidden on desktop, we're going to go ahead and add a display of none. Okay. These are all uh, desktop style properties where we've added here. So now we're just going to give this a display of none, come back and check it out. And it's been removed. So very cool. So again, if we go ahead and we shrink this down, the next thing we want to happen 
is we want these five list items here to disappear. We don't want them to show on mobile. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a media query that detects the width of the display and it's going to add a breakpoint to it to start adding new style properties. So uh, you can see here as we shrink it down, all the list items, they just kind of collapse and run into each other. So let's come back to our text editor and add our first media query. And again, to kind of help categorize this, I'm going to hit command option forward slash, uh, create a comment here, just add some pound signs, and I'm just going to type in mobile. That way I know these are going to be my mobile styles. Okay, So to create a media query, we're going to take an at symbol, type in media, so this allows the browser to de detect that, hey, we've got a media query here. Um, I need to read these properties. We're going to type in the keyword screen. And what this does is it's going to t detect the media screen on desktop, tablets, and mobile phones. So it can start detecting display widths. And then we're going to write and some parentheses. And in here, we want to detect for a maxed width to tell the browser or the display when to do its break to start making uh, mobile styles. And we're going to add a max width of 680 pixels. This is when we want all of these uh, special style properties to apply to the other elements in the page that we grab here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get these this, uh, this list item here to disappear, right? Well, we can do the same thing that we did on the drop-down icon up here and add a display of none. So let's go ahead and grab the parent, okay, and dive into our list item. And remember, we've added a. Uh, actually, we're just dealing with the standard list items here. So let's go ahead and give them a display of none. All right. Now, before I show you what this looks like on the browser, let's kind of look at this and and think about what's going to happen here. We've just grabbed the parent and all the list items and told them all to disappear when we get a max width of 680 pixels. All right. So let's see what happens. Well, gosh, everything disappears now, right? Well, we don't want that to happen because we only want to leave the home element, right? We want to leave the home list item. Now, the reason everything disappeared is because we told all the list items uh, to have a display of none when the browser reaches a certain width here. And because nothing is now adding a, a, um, a height to our nav bar, because we have text styling on these to add padding and everything, our entire nav bar is removed. So we want to target and say, hey, we want all the list items to be removed except for the home. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to come back to our list here our list element, and we're going to add what's called a not selector. So add a colon, type in the word not, some parentheses, add another colon, and what we're going to do is we're going to do an nth child, another parentheses, and the number one. Now let me explain what's happening here. We're telling all these list items to have a display of none except the child number of one. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at all the children from the unordered list parent and it's going to say, hey, we're going to add a display of none to all these list items except the first child, which so happens to be home. So let's go ahead and check this out again. And you can just see that we've got our home uh, link here. So pretty cool. So that's going to be the, uh, the first steps in this lesson. We have added our drop-down menu icon, and we've removed it from the desktop display, and we have successfully uh, hidden these five links here when we get on a mobile dis display here. Now, one thing to note, as you are building uh, a web page, as you start building every section, like a nav bar or a section with uh, paragraphs and images and everything, it is important to build the section out on desktop and then go right into, after you've completed that, go ahead and start designing it for mobile, all right? Because here's what's going to happen. 
If you start building an entire website on desktop, build the entire thing out and then decide to go back and make it mobile compatible, you're gonna have all your elements running into each other, shifting around and everything is gonna be a huge sloppy mess and it's gonna be a nightmare to figure out how to get that organized. However, if you build one section at a time, make it mobile compatible, make sure everything collapses correctly, now you know that you can move on to the next section of the website, build that and make it mobile compatible. That way you're following all your elements and making sure everything is collapsing correctly. So that's a wrap for this lesson. Let's move on.